Now, if you want to learn how to use S Shake like you saw in the preview, then keep watching because I'm going to show you all of that today. So this is not going to be a tutorial that says, oh, you got to do this setting and that setting. And then you have this shape where you have to copy basically everything. No, this is going to be a tutorial more like how everything works, like what all these settings are, what they mean and how you can make your own actual shakes because not the exact same shake looks good on every clip. Like you got to know how to adjust it to make it look better and all that. So yeah, let's get started. If you have watched like my Twitch shake tutorial or my dissolve shake tutorial, especially dissolve shake, then you would notice that all of these settings look very similar, like almost the exact same, to be honest. So you might wonder like, what is the actual difference? Twitch is, for example, a very, very harsh and fast shake. Like it's meant more like an impact shake. And then you have S shake, which is more of like a vibey shake, can be a little bit slower, maybe on like soft edits or vibey edits. You would use S shake and then dissolve shake is kind of in between. You can make like some slower shakes with it, but also like twitch like some really harsh impact shakes for flow for example so that's kind of the difference although the settings do look very similar now what do all these settings do first you have the amplitude this basically tells you how much is going from left to right top to bottom or zoom in and out so let's say i would put this to like 15 like it's going all over the place it's not what you want of course if i would put it to very slow then it is just not going too much from left to right or top to bottom. And then you have the frequency. This basically tells you how fast the shake is going. So let's say I would put this to one. It is now going very slow. Let's say I would put this to 20. It's going very fast. So the default is eight and yeah, that's usually fine, especially if you want more of like an impact shake, you would make the frequency higher. If you want more of like a soft shake, you would make it like lower, maybe three. So it's going a little bit slower. So you could actually just keyframe the amplitude and call it a day. But you have way and way more settings. So over here you have the X shake settings, the Y shake settings, and the Z shake and the tilt shake. Now what do all of these do? X shake is basically from left to right. The shake is going like this. The Y shake is from bottom to top. So the shake is going like that. The Z shake is zooming in and out. So that's that. And then you also have the tilt shake, which is kind of like a rotation. This isn't used that often. So now you gotta like decide what type of shake you want. You could just leave this all on or you can just go for like an X shake that goes from left to right only or for a Y shake that goes from top to bottom only. I think I'm gonna go for an X shake that goes from left to right. What I'm gonna do is go to the Y shake and just push the random amplitude to zero and this will stop moving the shake from top to bottom. So now it only moves from left to right as you can see. So I'm going to go to the X shake and maybe put it to like 500 like that and then it's going very far like that i think i'm gonna keep the random frequency on one but later i'll i'll check if that is still fine maybe i'm gonna lower it or make it higher and i think for this frequency i'm just gonna put it to four so it's going a little bit faster and then for the amplitude i'm just going to leave it at one so now i'm going to keyframe the amplitude so i'm gonna press u on my keyboard i think i'm gonna go to like maybe over here and just put it to zero now you want to select both of these keyframes press f9 on your keyboard open up the graph editor make sure it's set on value graph not the speed graph like that the value graph is better and you want to just yeah I, I usually do something like this so it goes very fast in the beginning and slows a bit down at the end and then you have like a very clean shake so for this scene you would actually need more of an impact scene so maybe dissolve shake would be better but this small little shake like that is pretty clean so if you actually want to just make it faster you could put maybe to like six would be cool and then i'm gonna put the amplitude a little higher like that and drag the keyframe a little bit down yeah maybe that's cool and um yeah because of the twixer you see this though it's kind of ugly but you can fix that with the timer map if you want here you can see the tilt for example if you put this to 100 and it would look like that so yeah it looks a little bit weird that's why not a lot of people use the tilt shake the z shake a lot of people do use that it's pretty clean you would notice it a little yeah, so you can just kind of mess around with all this. Is there anything else I have to cover? Oh, you actually have RGB channels. So you can kind of like make an RGB shake. As you can see. You do have the, the seed, for example. This kind of just... It's kind of like Minecraft, you know? Where you have a seed for each world. It generates a completely new world. So each seed for this will also generate a new type of shake. Although they look very similar... 
they are a little bit different as you kind of can see over here so that's actually kind of funny and um yeah so that's kind of it i guess that's most of it you do want to make sure to have motion blur always disabled and these wraps you want to put them on no because you want to add your own motion tile i hope this video helped you out please leave a like and let me know in the comments if it worked and i'll see you next time have a good day